Well, it's not a Comic-Con without talking to Mr. Kevin Smith, director of Tusk. How's it going? It's going amazing. As per every Comic-Con, man, it, it's it, every you, every time you come here, you feel like, all right, I've done this a bunch. Like, this is my 19th yeah. Comic-Con. So you figure, like, I've seen it all. I've, I've You know, it's a bunch of cosplaying, a bunch of people getting together, getting passionate about the things they love. And then something magical happens, and that makes it, like, a very special year moment. I had a Hall H panel last night where we showed... Uh, a trailer for this movie I made called Tusk mm. and after the trailer ended um, you know lights come up people clapping all of a sudden the audience broke into an impromptu round of going walrus yes walrus <laughs> yes walrus yes and that just melted my heart man so I'll always remember Comic Con 2014 for that especially yeah it must be a special experience when you have a film that you're really proud of and you want to get out to the audience <laughs> it's so special I don't know what that's like I rarely have a film I'm ever proud of this one though I can actually stand behind because it's just so bizarre man so uh, yeah it's neat I, I I've come to, let me see, I would imagine, I think it was about f five of the last movies I've released. I've always kind of come through Comic-Con anyway, so this is where I usually get to kind of showcase it for mm -hmm. a real audience outside of a film festival or something. So this is kind of a first look place for me for, for, for years now, actually going on like 19 years. Next year yeah. is the 20th anniversary. I Yay, keep like brushing you with my something. 20th uh, anniversary, and I'm, I feel like I'm going to cosplay it next year. <laughs> yeah, you 20 should. years, I've always kind of come as me and stuff, so I might actually put on a, some suit of some sort. Yeah. I always threatened to do fat stormtrooper but i actually might go for like silent bob of some sort but not like just me with the, your gear on like a kind of cartoonish version that i can kind of hide behind because i really want to go shopping again yeah. that's the thing i miss well it's like hugh jackman last year came as wolverine and no one knew get out of here is yeah. that right i remember Crazy. uh you know what's his name did from breaking bad yeah, he wore that mask awesome. in his face yeah yeah well, I was reading on your Facebook page that you said you're not retiring for filmmaking, but you're only going to make films that only you could make. Yes. How does Tusk fit in with that? I, it's, I don't think anybody ever would have made Tusk. I mean, that's and that's the only reason I kind of went back to it, because I'd stopped with Red State. But when we had this conversation on an episode of Smodcast that turned into what is Tusk, um, and it's laid out beat for beat. It's like a blueprint for what the movie would become. Like, I got so in, engrossed in the conversation and in the idea of seeing a movie about a guy who turns another guy into a walrus <laughs> that I start getting sad because nobody's going to make it because I realize it's so stupid nobody's ever going to make the movie. And then you also kind of hear it in my voice where I'm just like, you know what, man, like, if anybody, if nobody's going to do it, I, you know, I used to be a filmmaker. I could do these sort of things. Maybe I can make it. So I, I, there was that kind of turnaround moment that, that I think it like frames the story behind what that movie is because suddenly it was like me going well this would be fun if I could find a way to do it where it's fun um, and and cheap enough to, mm. to make something weird you know unfortunately after making movies for as long as I did I priced myself out of doing anything interesting like mm -hmm. Clerks is interesting, Chasing Game is interesting, Dog is interesting those movies are $10 million or under mm. you know the moment I get into like $25 million, $30 million budgets you talk about Jersey Girl, Cop Out. These are movies that are pretty mainstream and anybody could kind of direct them. Um, so for me, it, it, if you give me less money, you know, it, it forces you to be more creative. And I think if you look at my body of work, it's like the less money I got, the more I'm like, okay, what do we do instead? Mm -hmm. And some ideas you just fall in love with so much that you're like, I don't care what it's going to take. Maybe we need way more money to do this sort of thing, but forget it. We'll, we'll do it with the money a lot. It will play the ball where it lays. Mm -hmm. So I kind of came out of, you know, I just went into the world of podcasts because I fell in love with it so much. It was far easier easier and cheaper storytelling. Mm -hmm. You sit down with anybody and you're off and running. None of this, like, I need $20 million in Ben Affleck stat, you know, in order to express myself. You just do a podcast. So the podcast kind of led back to the movie. But the movie is just so out there, man. Like, it's one of these flicks that every everything else mostly I do, like, particularly the early earlier better work, as they call it, um, that came from the heart, right? It was just ripped out of my heart. It's me. Like, I worked at the convenience store. That is my life. Chasing Amy was me. Mall rats is me and my friends. So forth and so on. I got to a certain place in life where it's like I told every story I could kind of take from my world and turn into something somewhat cinematic. Um, and, and cool movies like Chasing Amy, a lot of people seem to like Chasing Amy and stuff. And yeah. I get that a lot, particularly on Twitter. Like, why don't you make another Chasing Amy? You can't make Chasing Amy unless you're miserable I don't want to be miserable like chasing Amy came from a very sad place and so for me like I'm happy in life like I'm married I got a kid like it worked out and like yeah people take shots on the internet but what the life is cool so generally speaking I don't have a 
place to write it, Chasing Amy from? How the hell am I supposed to write Chasing Amy if I'm never going through any personal pain? Mm -hmm. So if I'm just trying to pull from my real life, really all I'm doing is making movies about a dude who's like happy and likes comics and tries to get laid probably too much with his wife. <laughs> so nobody wants to see that. So I kind of felt like, oh, I guess I'm out of to say but then with tusk you know i had the we were on the podcast having this conversation and i get real sad that nobody's going to make the movie and then i'm like well maybe maybe i can make a movie and i kind of whip myself into it and whatnot and i realized if i just keep the budget low enough mm. like i'd price myself out of being interesting you know my salaries went up my salary went up movie to movie as i made flick to flick as the years went on and they pay you more and more because you're in this pre-negotiated deal it's what i had at miramax and not knocking it, it was amazing but like they tell you what you're going to make on movie four and five, like five years before that happens. Yeah. And so, again, not complaining. They pay you a lot of money, but then when they start paying you more, they expect results. And I'm not yeah. the results guy. And like, well, you're the cooks. last guy in the world. Yeah. Well, I don't mind the cooks. Like, if you're giving me money, I'm more than happy to listen at least because you never know where a good idea is going to come from. So I'm not one of these people who's like, oh, the financiers are always wrong. What do they know? You know, I'm I'm open. I'll listen, and then if it's smart, hey man, we'll incorporate. If it's not, I'll try to politely figure out a way around it. Yeah. But for me, it's more like just you can't do anything or say something or shock people with a ton of money. I mean, unless you have a ton, you're making Avengers too. So for me, it's like the cheaper I keep it, man. I keep it like under five million bucks. I can do whatever I want. And even though I don't have like chasing Amy's and stuff because like I'm in a happy life and whatnot, I realize they're like the, my favorite filmmakers before I became a filmmaker, the people uh, whose movies that I loved and stuff weren't comedy filmmakers. It was like David Cronenberg and David Lynch and the Coen brothers. And you'd watch those movies with your friends and wide eyed and be like, oh, that's f***ed up. Like that was the highest praise you can give a movie. Like that's f***ed up. You didn't say like four stars or thumbs up. You're like, oh, did you see this? This is up and you pass it off to somebody and it was currency so i never got to make one of those movies i made a bunch of comedies and stuff and people some people seem to like them but i never made one of those movies where people are like oh that's f***ed up unless they were like ew he f***ed it up i got a lot of that <laughs> but the uh the like like richard kelly makes donnie darko right off the bat yeah. and that is like this is you see that movie you're like that's f up. i don't know what it means but that's up and so like some people Edgar Wright I thought Shaun of the Dead he made like a wonderful movie that was com comedy driven but still you go like that's up yeah. so I never made one of those in my life and then suddenly I was like well you know how those guys do that they don't like reach into their personal life and go I once worked at a convenience store or I once you know uh, was a sexually insecure male a la Chase Gaming um, or I was raised Catholic this makes shit up mm -hmm. you know like one day it took me 20 years in this business to realize oh a lot of these just make shit up. This is like, why am I taking from my real life? I got nothing left. I strip mine my real life. So I got to go fracking for something else instead. And what I realized is like, you can make shit up. I sat there going like, George Lucas didn't pull Wookiees from his heart. He just made that shit up. They don't exist. So do what like Cronenberg would do. Do what David Lynch would do. And now I can't make movies as good as them, but I can just like make shit up. And you know, I've been around long enough where I know how to put a movie together. So suddenly you're like, all right, let's make a movie that you would have loved to see way before you were a filmmaker. The kind of movie you turn to your friend and be like, this is up. Yeah. So I think I finally got to do that. And it feels kind of cool. It dials your clock back, man. I feel like I'm in my 20s again. Look like I'm in my 60s, but I feel like I'm in my 20s. <laughs> well, Tusk does look up, so I can't wait to see it. Good. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Nice to meet nice you. Nice to meet you.